have uh, two, or two questions that uh, uh, I try to answer myself. First of all is uh, an applied one. Uh, how, do you, how do we deal with uh, the theory of property rights uh, in uh, family, in the relationship between uh, parents and a uh, child? For example, uh, me as a father, uh, um, in uh, my relationship with my sons, when do they have full property rights on uh, their own body? Uh, I think they have. And uh, uh, I think the, the criterion that, uh, that the, the Rosebart gave is in a way a sensible criterion. I mean, obviously, you cannot say a specific age, you cannot say at three, at four, or five, that depends, the, the children are I, uh, different. Sorry, 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 to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to better, for, be for better under uh, understanding, it's uh, uh, the time when he is uh, uh, born or uh, uh, he is uh, in her uh, mother, um, he's, uh, when he is unborn. But he still exists. That's a t that's a tricky question. Um, uh, I do I do think that regardless of what your position is on sh should abortion be permitted or should it not be permitted. It can never be an issue that is an issue for the state. It can only be an issue for those parties that are directly involved. That is, the mother and maybe the father and maybe the grandparents and so forth. So it would have to be regarded as a family matter that should be disputed and decided with, within the family. To have a state law saying abortion is all right or saying that abortion is not all right, I think I would be opposed to any of these solutions. The matter has traditionally been handled within, within families. Uh, pressure is generated on the woman to either not abort or to <coughs> abort. And their decision, whatever the decision they come to, should be respected because it has been made by those people who are directly or indirectly affected by it. That would be my, my position on this. Um, and we, we do not have to be able to decide all questions that arise in in life. Um, these, these lifeboat situations that people frequently bring, uh, that you touched upon, somebody comes swimming across the ocean there and uh, wants to crawl onto your island. Um, do you have the obligation to accept them onto your island or can you say, hey, swim back where you came from? Um, yes, a person might have the right to say swim back where you came from, but the consequences might be quite drastic. He might not be punished, but a person like this can be ostracized. Um, nobody might ever want to have anything to do again with a person that made a decision such as this. On the other hand, it might be an arch enemy uh, who has previously killed uh, my father, my mother, and now comes to gets out of the water and wants to crawl onto my island. In that case, uh, people might well see that's what he deserved to get told, swim back where you came from. Um, so not all sit. One should free oneself from the illusion that all conceivable scenarios we must be able to hammer out an immediate solution to it. 
there is in a free society also a function for lawyers and judges. Uh, you bring your conflicts before third parties uh, who command respect uh, and they come up with judgments that are in accordance with local traditions, regional traditions um, and so forth. Uh, I have, again coming back to the abortion case, there are very few opponents of abortion who would just go as far as to say even if uh, fetus is the result of a rape, uh, the woman should be obliged to carry the kid until birth. Um, again, I have, I have no clear-cut answer what, what the decision should be in this situation. Uh, this is something for family courts, family councils and so forth to inside, decide, but it is certainly nothing that should be a matter of state policy. One, one thing is, of course, it is decisive, are, does there a parasitic relationship exist or is the parasitic relationship over? Once, once they are born, the parasitic relationship is over. Bef before they are attached, I mean, biologically speaking, as a, as a parasite to somebody else. So this is a decisive moment when the umbilical cord is cut, so to speak. Then the second, the second thing is, kids of course are not, once they're born, certainly not produced by their parents in the sense that we produce a refrigerator or a telephone. Um, because uh, we can always say there, there are goods that are appropriated and there are goods that are naturally owned. Over my body I have direct control and every person has only direct control over their own body. I can have control over his body but not directly, only by using my, by my body first. Uh, the, the parents have control over the kid but not, no, di no direct control. And who has direct control and who are indirect control, direct control logically precedes, of course, in the indirect, uh, indirect control. And that we have direct control, the proof is simple. I can say, I, I decide to lift my arm. Uh, I can make your arm go up too, but not in, not in this way. I would have to lift, lift it up. You are the only one who can just will certain things to happen with something to which you are in a way tied as nobody else is tied. In so, in so far, the argument, uh, yeah, but parents were impregnant, the mother was impregnated, and because of this, the child is, so to speak, the product, just like a telephone is the product of the telephone producer, does not work. If the, te if the telephone would, in fact, uh, once it has been produced, then all of a sudden uh, just yeah, call people up on its own uh, and... Uh, and receive telephone calls without me interfering, then we would have to say maybe the telephone is just also a rational entity and we have to uh, apply the same type of reasoning that we apply to humans too. Uh, going back to the question, uh, perhaps all in this room or most of you are familiar with uh, some arguments in uh, ethics of liberty and main translation which is not published yet. But right there, it's, uh, you can see an argument uh, about abortion in this way. Is there any possibility to view this case in this way? The parents are directly responsible and they are the main cause for the children's inability. So, it will follow logic from here that you have to raise him until he gets a moment where he can advocate for his property rights. Yeah. So as to... And, and, if you, and if you don't do it, then you have to make sure that the, ki the kid is offered yes. for adoption to somebody yes, who would do this. We agree with 
agree with this thing, then uh, if, if the parents are killers, uh, remains this question if the state uh, should, uh, should go there and, uh, and uh, restrict abortion or let it be. I mean, uh, is, it, is it the state a criminal when he intervenes in abortion or he, he only uh, refrains a criminal, another criminal, from the sex? But again, it wouldn't have to be the state. Every private person could do that yes. also. Yes, right? yes, but yeah. what would happen if... But with the state, the argument against the state would be because the state gets its funding, so to speak, in a criminal way. If a private person would prevent this sort of thing from happening, he would do it with his own resources. So it would be yes. more moral if a private person would intervene in the way that you said and, this, and the state would stay out of it entirely because after, after all, I mean, even, even the personnel that it sends in there to do whatever they do, uh, would be personnel that is funded by illegitimate, uh, in an illegitimate way. I mean, it's like inviting some, somebody on your boat, and then you are... And then you're dumping him off, yes. yeah. Is there a possibility to do Yeah, that is a vi violation of, of the contracts that, so to speak, uh, uh, exist.